Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Full Throttle Remastered. So when last we left, um, Malcolm Corley had just been murdered by his vice president, Adrian Ripberger. Um, the young photographer who had rescued Ben after his accident, with me making air quotes as I say that, um, had been there and taken photographs of it, but then had been captured by one of Ripberger's henchmen. Uh, said henchman came back here to Maureen's place because it has, we discovered that Maureen is Malcolm Corley's daughter. And Malcolm intended for Maureen to inherit the Corley Motorcycle Manufacturing Company. So the henchman, Bolas, came back here and was going to kill Maureen, but Maureen got the drop on him literally. Ben came back here after finding out about Maureen's relationship to Malcolm to check and see if she was all right. And he has seen the aftermath of the little altercation between Maureen and Bolas. Uh, he has noticed that there is a camera here, but it has no film in it because Bolas brought the camera back with him and didn't destroy it. So the implication is that Maureen has taken the film out of the camera and now has the incriminating photos of Adrian Ripberger murdering Malcolm Corley. So now Ben has to figure out where to go next. Uh, one of the things that Ben noticed is that there was a picture on the wall of Maureen's of her and her uncle, who used to run a mink ranch, and that Maureen mentioned that she liked to go there when she wanted to be by herself. So that's probably a good place to start. And so that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, I don't walk. Uh, <laughs> I have to get on the bike. Okay. So this is... I think the way that we came from it, I think this will take us back to the kickstand bar. Oh no, this will take us to a police roadblock. So much for returning to the scene of the crime. They'll be coming this way soon. Okay, that's where... Fast. That's the direction that you go. See, I can never remember which way is which. Another thing I don't like about this game is it brings you all the way back down here before it lets you go. Okay, so now I'm going to go this way. So basically I'm going to retrace my steps. This is the direction I initially came from when we came to Melonweed. The thriving metropolis of Melonweed. Oh, there is some kind of truck here. Let's go inside. Hey, killer. What? Hey, it's cool. Your secret's safe with me. What secret? Haven't you been watching the news? Once again, our top story tonight. Malcolm Corley, owner of Corley Motors, was found dead at a rest stop just outside the town of Melonweed. Apparently, the benevolent patriarch and CEO was Viciously beaten about the head and neck, savagely and without mercy. Police have arrested a notorious outlaw biker gang known as the Polecats. No. With the exception of their leader, who is still at large. Roadblocks have been set up along Highway 9 in an effort to apprehend this dangerous and violent criminal. We've been set up. Roadblocks suck. I shouldn't have left the gang there. Hey, I don't want to hear anything about it. You ain't making me an accessory after the fact. Just lay low, man. Members of the Polecat Gang are in custody, but their leader remains at large. Authorities have issued an all-points bulletin. They got the Polecats. Let's see if there's anything more for Latest to reports suggest that the leader of the Polecats may have had an accomplice. A young mechanic. Maureen. 
The two are being sought by authorities for questioning in connection with the violent death of motorcycle magnate Malcolm Corley. Asked about the eminent shareholders meeting, <laughs> Corley an Motors Vice President Adrian so Rickberger made in this game. the following statement. We cannot in good conscience go forward with the shareholders meeting until the perpetrators of this misdeed have been brought to justice. He's up to something. He wants us dead before the meeting starts. Authorities are still seeking the leader of the Polecats and his accomplice, both thought to be armed and dangerous. Yeah, except Ben's not armed, really. The latest reports suggest that the leader of the Polecats may have had an accomplice. Okay, now mechanic. we're just repeating. The two are being sought by authorities for questioning in connection with this the guy over here of motorcycle magnet with Malcolm the knife. Corley. Emmett. He doesn't look happy. Whoops, I want to talk to him. I can do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Seem to have a lot of time on your hands. Not to mention Nixon scratches. <laughs> Am I distracting you? <laughs> Emmett's another character voiced by Mark Hamill. That's your truck out front. I need a ride. I look like a cabbie to you. Get lost. They're not letting anyone through that roadblock anyway. Not even truckers? They turned me around, said police business only. Pigs. Look, I really need a ride. Not gonna happen. Why? Because you're afraid of some cops? No, because I don't like you. I just killed a guy. I'm just about to. I don't think that's good for the table. Hey, Quahog. Yeah, Emmett? I'm gonna be knifing up your table for a while, all right? The customer with the knife is always right. <laughs> good talking to you. Friendly folks you get in here. Em, it's not what you'd call an I'm okay, you're okay person. Ah, shut your hole, Quahog. Uh, so that's where you hear Quahog. Look, let me tell you what happened. I told you, I don't want to get involved. Look, let me tell okay, you what so happened. Okay, so just going to say the I same thing. I told you, I don't want to get involved. Okay, so now i got to figure out how to get past the roadblock. And it's going to involve doing something with the truck, I think. This sucker's mine. <laughs> Is it, though? Look, I really need a ride. He's not even in the truck. Look, I really need a ride. Okay, so I was just checking to see if there was anything else. Like, you can go this way. But you can't go this way. But let me get back on the bike here. Because it's been a while, and i got to see if I can figure out exactly how to... Uh... Okay, so it, it doesn't let you ride that way. So I can ride back over there. Um... Ah, yes. Ben! Miranda, the photographer. Ben, no time to talk. You know, it's stank in there, but I can't remember a better sleep. You gotta help me. Go find my editor in Corville. Tell him I took pictures of the Corley murder. You got pictures? Yeah, but some thug took my camera. So you don't have any pictures? Well, I tracked the guy to Melonweed, but I'm not going near the place. They kill me! Get my editor! He's gotta get me out of this! Take one of these fake IDs to get through the roadblocks! Hmm. One of these fake IDs. My career is riding on those pictures! Help me, Ben! You're my only hope! <laughs> 
Oh, Help me, worry. Ben. You're my only I owe you one. If Miranda's thug is the same one that trashed Moe's place, that could be Miranda's camera I saw there. But then, who's got the film? Uh, <laughs> a new hope. <laughs> so, for like the zero of you who didn't catch that reference, help me, Ben, you're my only hope. It's a reference to Star Wars and the achievement of New Hope. <clears throat> okay, so, oh, actually, no, let's go back over here. I want to... You know, it's stank in there, but I can't remember a better sleep. Let's see if we can still talk to her. I'm not putting my lips on that. Oh, okay, so he can't talk to her anymore. Okay, so... Maybe... Let's see, do I give him the fake ID? Here. What's that? Fake federal investigator ID. Could be of some use at one of those roadblocks. Ever hear of this place? Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch. I remember there used to be some sort of weasel plantation or, or something up the <laughs> weasel road. Weasel plantation. Down Highway 9 on the other side of them damn roadblocks. I used to pick up mink meat there real cheap and sell it to school lunch programs. <laughs> that was a good scam. So how about a ride? What if they search the back and find my bike? It's buried in a pile of concentrated fertilizer powder. Trust me, no one's gonna dig through that crap. Now you're gonna ride in the engine compartment. The engine compartment? Hey, I smuggle stuff in there all the time, and most of it's worth more than you. So stuff your carcass in there quick, and we might hit that mink dump by morning. Hope you're better with a stick shift than you are with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Then we're on our way, presumably. Oh, That's a pretty great. big engine compartment. Smells like he's got a fuel leak. I love engine fires. Yeah, they're always fun. Sorry, sir. Only police vehicles beyond this point. I'm with the feds, chump. Check it out. Huh? <laughs> Check it about? out. Undercover agricultural sting operation. What's in the back? Fertilizer. All right, move along. Hope you really get your man. Well, I guess that worked. <laughs> ben falls asleep. Is he sleeping as well as he did in the dumpster? We stopped moving. We've stopped moving. What's going on? And here we are. Problem with your truck? Yeah. <laughs> Loose hose and nothing big. I, I already pulled your bike out. It's sitting right over there. Well, nice knowing you. Gotta hit the road, you know. Hmm, he seemed in an awful hurry to get out of here. I wonder why. Uh-oh. Yeah, Ben knows something's up too. He did have a fuel leak, and he took my fuel line to fix it. That trucker's gonna die for what he did. Okay, well... <clears throat> As somebody who knows about motorcycles and how they work, uh, I don't think the fuel line on your motorcycle is going to be big enough, large enough diameter, or long enough to uh, work on a truck. But hey, whatever, it's a video game. Oh, we're going to go over here and we're going to go into Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch. The barn's locked. The barn's locked. Yes, but I can go in here. I wonder why Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch has a water wheel. Quite the, quite the art though, you know, that you know gives you that desert sense there. All right, what's this banner on the wall? Looks like some kind of a logo. That's the insignia of the vultures. I can't believe Mo used to be a vulture, but then again. How else could she have gotten that recoil booster? Yeah, so the vultures are another motorcycle gang. Rustic. A crowbar, or a tire iron. 
Not after Mo made it so nice. Pictures. What are these pictures of? Lots of bikes. Lock. Tough looking padlock. Yeah. Um. Since I don't have my lock pick anymore. Ah, uh, junk. And a hose I can use on my bike. I don't think Mo would mind if I borrow him. Mo? There goes Mo. Quick repair. Oh, we caught up with Emmett's truck. And now we've caught up with Mo. Who has a solid fuel recoil booster. Which I don't have anymore. Because <clears throat> she took it. She took my booster fuel. Why is she running from me? She must think the whole world's against her. I think I know how that feels. You really are going to have to die for that. He's dead. That sign. That means I'm in cavefish territory. Cavefish. Another motorcycle gang. And these guys are... Kind of creepy and weird. You ride interesting motorcycles, though. Drops the trailer. <laughs> well, so much for Emmett. Goodbye, Emmett. We're not going to miss you. This cargo is worthless. We have been tricked, my brothers. Back to the cave. Yeah, it's just fertilizer. Oh, meanwhile, back at the mink ranch, here's oh. Nestor. The place looks deserted. Maybe the boss was wrong and she ain't coming here. She's coming. We just got here first. No, actually, she was here and was here and is gone. And okay, so. Emmett is gone. Maureen has fled. She fled across a bridge which got destroyed. And uh, Emmett's trailer here has wrecked and has put a bunch of fertilizer all over the road. I suspect we're going to have use of this at some point. But we'll find out in the next session. Until then, thanks for watching.